Hello everyone, I'm Heather Dawson and it's a pleasure bringing you the best of California every week on our show. So let's start off our show with a trip back to Puerto Vallarta. Marco Gutierrez takes us to the resort that set the all-inclusive standard in Puerto Vallarta, now part of the preferred hotels and resorts collection. Welcome to Velas Vallarta. <laughs> Velas Vallarta from the award-winning Velas Group boasts a 10-acre beachfront location with views of the Sierra Madre Mountains in the distance. Located in the Marina Vallarta, it's one of the most exclusive areas of Vallarta Nayarit. The center of activity is a lush tropical garden courtyard with three sparkling swimming pools, a cascading waterfall, swim-up bar, and even resident iguanas. It's perfect for friends and family getaways or a romantic couple's retreat with numerous exciting activities for day and night. Dining is a highlight of the experience with restaurants offering elegant and casual oceanfront settings. Bellas Vallarta's all-inclusive resort amenities have been carefully selected for comfort and choice. Welcome to Velas Vallarta. Here you're at your home. Here you have nothing to worry about. We're an all-inclusive, all-suite hotel. We're here for large families, large groups, couples, honeymooners, singles. We'll take you all in and we'll treat you as family. As an all-inclusive package, we have to say that we run one of the less complicated, less surprising types of all-inclusive which means you won't find service charges in each and every restaurant. You won't find extra bills upon checkout. What you paid for is what you get. No paying for any more higher value. I do want to wish you all come on down to Puerto Vallarta. Safe area, it's a beautiful area, and be our guests. We're here to welcome you. Thank you. Shops, art galleries, cafes, and Puerto Vallarta's famed nightlife are just a short ride away. All of this at the best quality at one all-inclusive price. And coming up next, we have an important medical message for anyone that goes to tanning beds. All this and more when we continue with California Life. Don't go away. Melanoma is one of the most common cancers in young adults, especially young women. If you use tanning beds before the age of 35, you have an 87% higher risk of melanoma. My friend Tina spent years going to tanning beds and soaking up the California sun and is now fighting back after being diagnosed with stage four melanoma. Here's her story. The California sunshine. It's the reason that millions of people have moved to our state. But this beautiful sunshine can also have deadly consequences. Laying by the pool or spending the day at the beach is just part of the California lifestyle. But ultraviolet light from the sun is a leading cause of skin cancer. May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month, and research shows that skin cancer is by far the most common form of cancer. Estimates are that one in five Americans will get skin cancer in their lifetime. The most serious and deadly form of skin cancer is melanoma, and 86% of melanoma cases are attributed to excessive sun exposure. And studies show that even just one session in a tanning bed can raise the risk of melanoma by 20%. But the quest for the perfect tan can blind many, like Tina, whose mother had melanoma and warned her as a teenager to stay out of the sun. She would say, you're going to get melanoma, and I was invincible and I said whatever then I'll just die tan literally would say that well eight years ago Tina was diagnosed with melanoma after finding a mole on her back they removed it it went five millimeters deep which with melanoma only one millimeter it gets into your skin and gets in, can get into your lymph nodes so mine was really aggressive after extensive treatment, including the removal of multiple lymph nodes, Tina was cleared of the melanoma, at least for a time. 
And it was during that recovery time that Tina began following a young Rancho Cucamonga woman on social media named Chloe Thompson, who was diagnosed with melanoma at age 19 while serving in the Air Force. Chloe bravely and publicly fought melanoma before passing away at the age of 22. I would tell her, you need to slow down. You know, you, um, you have cancer, you know, but she just didn't want to give up. She wanted to live life and, you know, so yeah, she was a fighter. She was a warrior. She was a cancer warrior. Chloe's mother, Michelle, describes her daughter as an outgoing young lady who lived life to the fullest. She just never gave up. She never stopped fighting. In fact, when she finally passed away, people were surprised. They didn't realize that her cancer was as serious as it was because she, she just lived life every single day. And today, Michelle works hard to keep Chloe's memory alive in an effort to help others. I kept Chloe's Facebook going as a memorial page, and she has, I don't know, about 3,300 people on there. People really reached out to me after Chloe passed away and just told me, you know, how she inspired them. And while Tina never met Chloe, she reached out to Chloe's mother, Michelle, when she was recently re-diagnosed with melanoma, and they met recently for the very first time. You did great. <laughs> I try not to cry. I know, me too. <laughs> Chloe was so positive. She was just so positive, and everything I would watch of her, she was just happy, and she fought so hard. And I just vowed to fight as hard as Chloe did. And Chloe and Tina's stories are reminders to all of us of the dangers of this deadly form of skin cancer. Things to remember. People with fair skin, blonde or red hair, and blue eyes are most susceptible to melanoma. But anyone with extended sun exposure can be at risk. A family history of melanoma is also a risk factor. Warning signs include large, irregular moles that grow quickly. More than 9,000 people nationwide are predicted to die from melanoma this year. But the survival rate is very good if detected early. That means everyone, especially people in the risky categories, need to get regular examinations by a dermatologist. Melanoma can be prevented, so sunscreen, put some sunscreen on and give yourself a self-exam. It's just like breast cancer, it's really easy, just check your skin. As for Tina, she's in the midst of a new battle with stage 4 melanoma. And while her prognosis is unknown, she remains upbeat about the future. I'm super positive about it. I. I know I was put here for a reason and I'm just going with it. I, I hope that I could be an inspiration to somebody. I hope that my fight can help somebody else and I hope that my knowledge will help somebody else. If you or anyone you know fits in the high risk category or you're noticing new moles, we urge you to see your doctor immediately. For more information on melanoma, you can visit the American Cancer Society at cancer.org. Bringing you the best of California, I'm David Wiley for California Life. Behind every military member making a sacrifice, there's a family providing support and doing their part in the community. The Hunt Little Heroes program is designed to highlight the great things military kids are doing in their neighborhoods. Like five-year-old Asher, who found out his neighbor ran out of toilet paper, so he ran home, grabbed some out of the closet, and delivered it to their door. This is just one example of what it takes to be a Hunt little hero. These kids doing such good things in their community, we really wanted to highlight that and get it out in the world. Uh, April was the month of the military child, and we thought what a great time of the, to, to roll this out and, and honor military kids. Uh, they do terrific things. We want people to know about it. And, and right now, in this time of, of the pandemic, we need more good news. To celebrate some of the great things these military kids are doing, Hunt Military Communities launched its Hunt Little Heroes program. The program asks military kids to share their hero story about how they're being a positive influence in their own community. I look at the, our top three prize winners um, as a great example of the broad range of of some medals we got and, and some of the neat things we saw. Um, our first place winner was um, uh, spoke of 
how he takes care of his neighbor's pets when they're not in a position to do so. Our second place winner raised $10,000 for a charity of his choosing, which uh, is remarkable for a 12 year old to have that kind of maturity and initiative to do that. Uh, and then our third prize winner uh, at age seven wanted to make a really nice uh, message and gesture for uh, graduates this spring who are not in position to celebrate or recognize their graduation in the traditional fashion because of social distancing. And it was, so he put a real nice gesture together and it was, it was uh, a, a terrific outpouring of submittals and it was a lot of fun to go through them all. It's very inspiring. And the hope is that Hunt Little Heroes will not only inspire their community, but those who fight to keep us safe. The sacrifice that service members make for our way of life we, we gotta let them know that it's, it's for a good reason. Our way of life is worth the sacrifice. You can learn more about Hunt Little Heroes at huntlittleheroes.org. Bringing you the best of California, I'm David Wiley for California Life. Hi, Mr. Munoz, thanks so much for joining us. We just wanted to ask you some questions regarding the highly anticipated episode where you get married in Chicago Fire. With this whole coronavirus thing going on, how has this affected the filming well, uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to film the last three episodes of the season, uh, so we don't really get the payoff that the writers kind of try to build every year. Uh, but uh, what's kind of great about where we are is this episode that airs tomorrow uh, is really kind of a beautiful, happy ending to a very long season for a character that's been through quite a bit. So uh, if anything, I think it uh, is certainly an appropriate season finale um, with a lovely, happy ending in a period that I think people desperately need to be able to have a happy ending. How has your involvement at Teatro Vista with the Latino community really shaped your career as Joe Minoso in Chicago Fire that we see on TV every week? Wow, uh, that's an amazing question. Um, you know, Teatro Vista was the very first group of people to really bring me in uh, as a member of their own. And I learned a lot just watching and working with the people uh, as a part of that company. So that was an education in and of itself that translates into a million little things throughout the course of Chicago Fire. Most people who have an avenue like this, where they have the potential to reach a large audience, uh, when, you, when you're lucky enough as an actor to be like, well, what do I get to represent? Uh, especially when you're a minority, uh, to get this kind of role, you know, to get to play this kind of guy is sometimes very rare. Uh, and so it is, it is such a, it is really, it's such an honor, there's no other word for it, um, to be able to be someone who's a proud Latino and who uh, is a good human at the same time. It's really, really an honor. No one would suspect you. Money isn't a problem. But money is the root of this conundrum. Agnes is in a tough financial situation. Her friend Henny offers her a job. Take out Henny's cheating husband. There's a big payoff, but as you might suspect, nothing is clear cut in Intrigo, Dear Agnes. Carla Yuri and Gemma Chan star in this thriller available via video on demand. In the history of music, only five women over 40 have ever had a number one hit, and only one of them was black. Tracy Ellis Ross's superstar Grace Davis in The High Note, now on VOD. Grace has a brilliant past and an uncertain future. She's a stereotype typical diva with a harried personal assistant played by Dakota Johnson, and she dreams of becoming a music producer. However, Grace's personal manager, played by Ice Cube, wants the singer to move to Vegas and put on a nightly show there. Ross, who currently stars in the comedy Blackish, is putting her pipes to work in this movie, belting out six original songs. Remember that crazy blind date I had a while ago? This whole time I thought I was texting my dream girl. I'm texting that girl. David Spade is in a pickle when he discovers the woman he invited to be his plus one at a corporate retreat isn't who he thought. And let's say some uncomfortable situations ensue. Lauren Lapkus turns out to be the wrong Missy in this romantic comedy streaming on Netflix. We have to take control. 
Bruce Willis is back in action mode in Survive the Night. He's Frank, a former sheriff whose family is threatened by a couple of bad guys who break into their home and demand Frank's estranged son, a doctor, treat one of them for a gunshot wound. Father and son must work together to turn the tables on the criminals. You'll find Survive the Night via video on demand. We need some way to road test a more rural friendly message. If you can't live your principles in the bad times, I guess they aren't principles, they're just hobbies. Steve Carell is trying to put the fun back in politics in Irresistible. Carell is a Democratic consultant who persuades Chris Cooper's retired Marine to run for the mayor of a small Wisconsin town. Those efforts get the attention of the GOP and a savvy operative played by Rose Byrne, who wants to take the down behind the woodshed politically. John Stewart wrote the script and produced the comedy. Irresistible opens via video on demand May 29th. And that'll do it for this week. If you missed any part of our show, go to our website, CaliforniaLifeHD.com. I'm your host, Heather Dawson. We'll see you next time. Watch us on our YouTube channel.
Stay connected to our social media, like our blogs on Facebook.